Think about it for a second. Right now, millions of people are using bathrooms in places with no sewage systems, no pipelines, and no treatment stations. Every day, thousands of airplanes cross the sky, hundreds of cruise ships sail across the oceans, and trains travel thousands of miles. The question is inevitable, and maybe a little uncomfortable. Where does everything that's flushed down the toilet actually go when we're 30,000 feet in the air? Or in the middle of the ocean? Or even outside the planet in a space station? Could there really be waste orbiting the Earth right now? Pay close attention because today you'll discover the monumental engineering achievement humanity created to prevent a waste disaster in the sky. The sea, the rails, and even in space. In this video, we're lifting the lid on the four most secret systems in the world. What you're about to learn will blow your mind. When a passenger gets up from their seat on a modern Boeing 747, the last thing they want to think about is where all the waste ends up. But the reality behind that button is a masterpiece of aerospace engineering. The secret isn't gravity but a high-performance vacuum suction system. This system pulls waste through an airstream moving at 200 km per hour. It's so efficient that, unlike the 10 liters used by a regular household toilet, it only consumes about half a liter of water per flush. That weight reduction on long-haul flights translates directly into operational efficiency for the airline. Once activated, the waste is rapidly transferred to sealed retention tanks, known as holding tanks. These containers are high-strength structures designed to withstand extreme environmental conditions, including pressure and temperatures that can drop to minus 50 degrees Celsius at cruising altitude. This ensures complete biosecurity on flights lasting more than 15 hours. Once the aircraft lands, the waste management chain continues. A specialized ground service vehicle, nicknamed the Honey Truck, connects precisely to the discharge valve. Through external suction, the waste is transferred to municipal water treatment facilities, where it becomes part of the conventional sanitation process. This completely debunks one of aviation's most persistent myths, the so-called blue ice incidents, that frozen mix of waste and antifreeze fluid. These only occur in rare accidental leaks caused by faulty seals, since it's a serious violation for any airline to intentionally release waste during flight. In summary, every airplane is not just a flying machine. It's a miniaturized high-tech treatment plant. A vital link in the global infrastructure, operating silently and with astonishing efficiency at 30,000 feet. Out in the vastness of the ocean, where the horizon is the only boundary, a modern mega cruise ship functions as an autonomous technological metropolis. This floating city not only carries more than 6,000 people, generates its own power, and recycles its own waste, but it must also manage tens of thousands of liters of wastewater every single day. The challenge is monumental. How do you prevent an ecological disaster without access to a continental sanitation network? The solution is a masterpiece of marine engineering a compact, closed-cycle treatment plant hidden within the ship's hull. This system is known in the industry as the Advanced Wastewater Treatment System. The process is rigorous. Blackwater and grey water are directed through multiple stages of separation, biological filtration, and oxygenation. The final step, ultraviolet radiation disinfection, eliminates any remaining pathogens. The result is an exceptionally clean effluent that consistently exceeds the strict purification standards of the International Maritime Organization. Treated water is only released in open sea, strictly more than 12 nautical miles from any coastline. As for the solid waste, it undergoes thermal dehydration, drastically reducing its volume. This material is stored in airtight containers until the ship docks, at which point it's transferred to onshore facilities for final disposal. A cruise ship is no longer just a hotel. It's a self-contained ecosystem where engineering and sustainability converge on the open sea. While thousands of passengers enjoy life on board, this silent network works non-stop, proving that sustainability can function even in the middle of the ocean. 
For nearly a century, trains were the most powerful means of transportation on the planet, and also one of the least sanitary. Until the 1980s, it was common to see signs reading, do not use the toilet while the train is at the station. The reason was simple and frankly medieval. When the lever was pulled, human waste was discharged directly onto the tracks. Thousands of kilometers of iron and wood became the drainage system of a moving network. That unhygienic era ended abruptly when railway engineering looked strategically toward the skies. Inspired by the high-pressure vacuum suction systems developed for aviation, modern trains adopted a complete paradigm shift. Today, each flush is absorbed by a powerful vacuum system and directed into hermetically sealed retention tanks. Nothing is left behind, and nothing is released into the environment. The most advanced implementations are found in European and Japanese high-speed trains. These systems, known as biovacuum technology, not only minimize water consumption, but also use biological control technology to reduce odors and optimize energy use. They are designed for full autonomy. Long-distance overnight trains can operate smoothly for more than 20 continuous hours. When they reach their terminals, a specialized sanitation unit connects to a service valve and extracts all the waste, transferring it to conventional urban treatment plants. Although some older international train fleets still operate with open waste systems, their days are numbered under global regulations. Because the true modern revolution in rail travel wasn't speed, it was vacuum technology, a milestone of engineering that ensured the railway network stopped polluting its own path. On Earth, managing waste is a challenge. In space, it's a matter of survival. Aboard the International Space Station, every drop and every molecule must be reused. There is no gravity, no drainage system, and no way to simply open a hatch. Everything produced must be handled with absolute precision. Space toilets operate through air suction. Urine is separated and sent to the water recovery system, a miniature treatment plant that purifies the liquid and turns it back into drinking water. The process recovers more than 90% of the water used aboard the station. Every glass astronaut's drink could once have been part of a crewmate's recycled urine. Solid waste, on the other hand, is sealed in individual bags and stored in airtight containers. Once full, they are loaded onto disposable cargo ships, like Russia's Progress or America's Cygnus, that later detach and are directed toward Earth's atmosphere. During re-entry, everything is completely incinerated more than 100 kilometers above the surface. Nothing reaches the ground. Nothing remains floating in orbit. Space waste turns into thermal energy and disperses as an invisible rain. What began as human waste ends as a brief flash of light in the sky. In the vacuum of space, humanity learned that to discard doesn't mean to abandon, it means to transform. It may seem like a small topic, but behind each of these systems lie decades of research in biology, mechanics, and physics. The challenge is always the same, to maintain hygiene in places where the concept of drainage doesn't even exist. And that raises a question worth more than any technical detail. What do you think is the next invisible challenge human ingenuity will have to solve? Leave your answer in the comments. Your response might be more important than you think. Because in the end, true progress isn't measured in speed, altitude or distance. It's measured by our ability to clean, recycle and reinvent the way we live on this planet. Even when that planet is floating hundreds of kilometers above our heads.